Trading, checking in 8.05 p.m. Um, well, we told you today was, or Tuesday was going to be a huge day. We weren't sure which way the move was going to go, but we were kind of constructive on the market, um, you know, recommending nobody be short coming in here. Um, and part of it was, you know, we had catered. What I did was I changed this um, daily exponential moving average to a 31-day close. And the reason I did 31 days is because that's basically the top of where we started to see the sell-off, and I counted 31 days in. It's an odd number, but I, I think it's been spot on with the um, Fibonacci and the change in direction on the SPY. It also kind of cradled the bottom on the pullback here, um, and then it's starting to curl up now. Um, I also did a simple moving average on that same um, 31, which, like, which it looks like we're going to tag that um, probably tomorrow morning. Um, that number, if we were to hit it today, would be right around uh, 268 and change. Um, and that's an area, too, that I'm also looking for a little bit of resistance. So today we were looking for 260.50 as the first level of resistance. And if we look at the intraday frame, um, let's see what we have on the minute chart. You can see when the market opened, here's the regular session here. Um, we popped up and our first area of resistance was 260.50. That's kind of the area we started to get our first pullback. Um, we came back up, they wanted to sell it ahead of it, and then this is a trend line we had throughout the day. This isn't really applicable, but we touched the trend line and then it was off to the races. Um, we retested that 263 area a few times. That was another level of resistance that we didn't even note in the morning um, video because we didn't think we'd get there, but we blew right through that. Um, or Actually, we did mention it, but we thought that if we got there, we wouldn't hold that, and we blew right through that. Um, so now we're starting to look at some higher Fibonacci numbers. Um, if we go back to the prior chart that we just had up there on the daily, and you can see <clears throat> what we're looking at on the next area of resistance would be, um, and what I think is going to be probably pushed through, but it, it should it should show a little bit of resistance. Um, and here's why. So <clears throat> on the candle of... Um, what day was this? March 13th. We actually have an open on the Fibonacci, um, the 263.20 area. And there's a couple different Fibonacci we've been using, but we'll use this one um, currently since we pushed through some other numbers. Um, and we closed um, close to the high of the day at the 269.12 um, area. 269.30, let's see what the close was actually. 269.32 is the exact close. So 269.32 was the close. Everybody was in there. The next morning we gapped down. I mean, we gapped down big. And we closed towards the bottom of the day. So there's a lot of stranded um, traders at the 269 and change area. Um, so that's probably going to carry a little bit of overhead resistance. Um, these are higher candles, too, than these candles that we're looking at now. Obviously, we like to see the increase in volume that we saw. And we talked about the, de the decrease in volume on the way down um, to be careful if you're bearish on the market. The pullback was well controlled and under lower um, volume. And then we broke the wedge here. We can even remove the Fibonacci here. You can kind of see the simple um, graph that we created. Um, the simple moving average in the 20 um, was cradling the top, showing that. And then we just busted through both of those. And that's why we talked about this getting tighter in the range here. And we were looking for a big move. And we got the big move. <clears throat> so now we're looking at 269.30. Um, the stranded zone there with the top of that candle um, at the 269. Let's see what the height of that candle was. Actually, 271.40. So we're going to probably call 271 and change the next big resistance area. Um, and then your Fibonacci or tracement gets you up to the two almost a 280 area. Um, we can start reviewing those numbers later on. Um, we can also use the upper channel here as some areas um, intraday timeline, which would put us at also in the 270 area before we show any resistance along this top channel. So first area resistance we talked about was the moving average on the simple 31 that we started using. Um, and then that puts us around the 269 and change. Um, probably tomorrow that's going to be a little bit lower as this kind of starts to fade back into the timeline and curl back up. Um, but this stranded candle here ought to be interesting to see whether we can push through there. Um, the top of that, as I said, was 271.40. But the close, where everybody was left kind of hanging on the gap down, is 269.30. So 
that was that. Um, looking at some stocks that we've been recommending, Boston Scientific, BSX, bear with the charts here, big gap move right up to the, nice move on that one there. That's up, um, let's see how many, we had that up $1.71, but we were buying that in the 30 areas, 29 and change, so we're up almost 33. Um, gold had a big move, finally got it, but now we're coming into some overhead. Um, and we got what we wanted to see on gold, we got the volume. We finally got a big volume spike there above these other levels. Um, nice MACD turn up too on increasing volume. So gold's got some um, overhead ahead of it, obviously, but it's got a lot of juice behind it too. So JNUG had a nice move today. I was not trading it, but kudos to the guys that were in there. <clears throat> GDXJ is probably going to be a little bit more strained. It's not going to, I don't think it's going to travel with gold. That's why I'm a little bit hesitant there to jump in after hours. Looks a little weaker. Hasn't gotten above the uh, moving average that we've been using. Um, still broke out of the wedge, but hasn't cleared the ABC candle on the top here, just like gold did. So miners definitely lagging gold. Um, don't use gold as a uh, as a um, metering for where you're going to go with your GDXJ chart. I think they're they're starting to disconnect a little bit, and GDXJ is lagging on relative strength. Um, a couple other ones we've been looking at HPP. Um, HAPP had a pretty good day today. Charts looking a little bit better if we look at the monthly on the day. Um, I got a thousand sell order up there. Um, I'm in 1500 on this at a little bit of a higher level. Um, still constructive looking on this one. Kind of like that. And let's see the daily on the 30 day. Actually, we can do an intraday. We'll do a, a four hour on the 30 day. And you can see we're starting to curl up on HAPP as well. Getting a nice little curl. Um, you can forget about the moving averages, but we got to get above that 350 area. That's obviously the big resistance on HAPP. Hopefully, I'll be able to do it within the next few days. Um, then we had our a uh, couple other stocks, EVFM, that we have a big position in. Um, that one's not going to be able to even chart that. It's more speculative for the. Uh, um, if you watch the video that I saw, we think this could be a big four banger. Meaning that this could, uh, if it gets approval, it's they, it's a you know a feminine cream for um, birth control, um, had a really good efficacy, and it's in stage three. There's a link on the emails or the uh, videos below if you want to see it. It's called four possible four banger or four bagger. So EVFM looked pretty good today. Um, Microsoft nice break through some of the other levels that we talked about, but you got your spy numbers for tomorrow. Um, we're looking really strong. I'm sure we're going to keep pushing up here. Um, in the short term, um, a couple stocks I was trading today, W, I was short, um, shocked that this is as high as it is. Um, if this gaps up in the morning, I'll probably short it again. W is way fair, um, more on a fundamental play. And the 100 day moving average, I'm looking for that to try to tag it again. And if we can take a look at it really quick here, we'll look at the one year and we'll pull up a simple moving average on the 100 and you'll see what I'm looking at. Um, fundamentally, I'm not a big fan of the stock. And let's edit this and we'll make it 100. Um, big gap up though on some news. Obviously people are at home. They said you know their, their earnings are looking a lot stronger than they previously anticipated. Um, a lot of people at home obviously buying stuff and getting it delivered. So um, they, they do a lot of furniture online and whatnot. So there's the uh, moving average that I've been using from the breakdown. It's a 100 day simple moving average. Um, we couldn't fill that gap into the moving average today. Um, if we get close to it tomorrow, I'm probably going to short it again. Um, looks like it's riding up around 79, um, 78 and change. I don't even know if we're going to be able to get our today's high tomorrow. Um, but that ought to be an interesting one to keep an eye on too. W, Wayfair. And I'll come on in the morning too and we'll go over some different ideas as well. I'm sure there's some stuff that we missed today. Um, Carnival Cruise Lines had a little bit of a rebound today. That probably could get up to the 13s. Um, kind of rolled over late to the close, but it's a little bit of a scary stock to hold, I'm sure. Um, and we'll see how we look tomorrow.